So many shootings are preventable. They never would have happened if laws did a better job keeping guns out of the hands of dangerous people. But too many members of Congress are afraid to stand up to the gun lobby. They're afraid to vote for common sense reforms supported by 90% of the American people for fear that the NRA will come after them in the next election. Remember, the gun lobby fights laws that make it harder for them to sell guns. First and foremost, they are not constitutional scholars. They are sellers of firearms, and they want to sell increasingly large volumes of their product so that they can be making more profits. The National Rifle Association and gun lobby groups are constantly working to weaken laws on the books and prevent any new laws that might hurt their sales. As a result, we have a ludicrous set of loopholes in our law that allows criminals, the mentally ill, and even suspected terrorists to, call, to buy guns. We can't let this continue. As lawmakers, we have a responsibility to protect Americans from gun violence. After last night's votes, it's clear we haven't done our job. Last week, the American Medical Association declared in an official statement that gun violence in America is, quote, a public health crisis requiring a comprehensive public health response and solution. This was the first such declaration that's been made by our nation's largest medical association, and I commend the AMA for their leadership. The numbers behind their decision are staggering. Every year, almost 32,000 Americans are killed with guns. On an average, 297 Americans are shot, and 91 of those shootings are fatal on an average day in America. Communities across the nation are affected by this violence. Cities like Chicago, the daily tolls of, the sh of these shootings is de devastating. Last week, when I joined Senator Murphy and almost 40 other Democratic colleagues, we spoke out or tried to speak out to get the Senate to debate this issue, not just a quick drive-by vote of four amendments, take it or leave it, but a meaningful debate with real alternatives brought to the floor. The filibuster lasted 15 hours, caught the attention of the nation. When I went home this weekend, having been in this business for a while, I can really tell whether our activities out here are even noticed. They were. That filibuster was noticed. People came up to me and said, thank goodness, you're finally going to say something, do something. Vote on this issue of ending gun violence. Well, words are not enough, and the votes last night are not enough. We need to start with common sense reforms supported by the overwhelming majority of Americans. Keeping firearms out of the hands of suspected terrorists shouldn't even be debated. It's so obvious. We should prevent suspected terrorists from buying guns and make sure the FBI criminal background check is conducted every time a gun is sold. There is no excuse for what is going on now in northern Indiana. Gun shows take place regularly there. Guns are sold in volume out of those gun shows with no background checks on the buyers. So the gangbangers of Chicago and the others head over to northern Indiana, it's just across the border, fill up their trunks with guns and bring them into the city of Chicago. The police department in the city of Chicago has confiscated one crime gun per hour for every day this year, and we still have this huge backlog of guns that are floating through the community in the hands of those who have no business owning or using a gun. The Chicago Police Department is trying to keep up with this wave of firearms flooding our city. They've confiscated more guns than the cities of New York and Los Angeles combined, and still they can't keep up with it. There's no excuse for the gun show loophole. We should have serious, meaningful background checks of everyone purchasing firearms. The conscientious, self-respecting gun owners of America agree with us. They went through a background check to buy their guns. They think people should do that as well to avoid selling guns to the wrong people. We must never forget our obligation to do everything we can to keep America safe. Our first obligation, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, secure domestic tranquility in the United States. If that is our obligation, there's much more that needs to be done keeping America safe from gun violence. Thousands of Americans are shot and killed each year in shootings that could have been prevented. There are steps we can take consistent with our Constitution and with our tradition of supporting hunting, sport shooting, guns for self-defense. 
we can still take meaningful steps to avoid tragic death, and we shouldn't be afraid to do that. I'm not going to quit on this issue, and many of my colleagues will not either. I ask the American people, don't quit and don't get discouraged. Keep speaking out for common sense reforms as the American Medical Association did last week. When people say to me, what can I do? I say, in our democratic form of government, it's very basic. It's called an election. If this issue of gun safety means something to you, ask that member of Congress or that congressional candidate, that senator or the senatorial candidate where they stand. And if it's important enough, make your vote follow the answer. Join us and stand together. We can beat back the gun lobby and start saving lives and protecting the innocent across America. We can do this and we must.